Hello, I'd like to address a simple subject that none of us were taught about in high school or college, and that's uh, trying to have a very simple understanding of space and counter space. Of course, counter space is really an inappropriate word. We could actually say, of course, all of us have been addicted to uh, science fiction stuff, and of course, we would say uh, subspace, zero point energy, you could say all sorts of words, but we're talking about the substrate underneath what we think is reality of course is unreality the universe of course is holographic since 100 percent of the universe has mass and magnitude due to magnetism and magnetism only and of course everybody thinks well a magnet is has a magnetic field around it well, so, well that's true but that's only half the story here's a simple little not a very powerful disc magnet we'll take a look at a ring magnet in the center in a second here um, flip it over here a magnet does have a magnetic field around it, but everywhere we see light, and of course this is a slow-reacting uh, supercell. I did that on purpose so that it wouldn't uh, damage so easy and I wouldn't have to remake it. All these white lines, and of course right here at the center of this magnet, see that little yellow line right there? It's actually blue shifted even though it looks yellow. That's the plane of inertia where no magnetism exists. The other portal for where no magnetism is, of course, is the portals of increasing inertia and acceleration. These black holes, if you will, on either side of the magnet. Yes, this is what makes up the majority of what a magnet is, and that, of course, is the inertia of counter space. The non-Cartesian or anti-Cartesian, we could say subspace or zero-point energy, it doesn't really matter. Of course, Mother Nature does not care what we call it. Let me put the magnet underneath the supercell here. Mother Nature doesn't care what we call it. Yes, everywhere we see light is where we actually see constructive interference. And we see the absence of light, we have destructive interference. Of course, this is the conjugate geometry of the entire universe. If I get down at a steep angle here and uh, look at it, there we go. You can actually see this holographic effect. We can look at a vortex that looks like a, a dip or a drain where there is a complete absence of light at the center of this. It is like about a one-inch uh, neodymium. It's actually covered in uh, plastic. It's not a very powerful one. But we see a complete and total absence of light. And that, of course, we could say human beings, due to science fiction movies, are uh, used to seeing or thinking things in terms of uh, subspace or uh, zero-point energy. We all grew up with these this jargon from Star Trek and various other science fiction, but we're looking at the conjugate geometry of the entire universe, the dielectric and the magnetic. Of course, the dielectric and the magnetic are one and the same thing, like ice and water are not two different things, they're just different expression modalities of water. Well, the magnetic and the dielectric are not two different things, they're one thing and one thing only. Here we have the constructive and destructive interference between the magnetic and the dielectric. Of course, everywhere we see the absence of light, we have destructive interference, i.e. the dielectric of everything vanishing into counter space, which of course is where it began to begin with. Light is a coaxial circuit, and of course it bends to the magnetic, but of course we're looking at nanoparticles of, uh, of uh, iron in a surfactant, and it's reacting to the light. I'm moving it so that it doesn't burn in an image, and I can show you a ring magnet in a second here. But uh, here is where we have no magnetism at the center of this magnet. Now, as I've spoken before, we all think of the center of something as where being the majority of where something is, but that's the opposite of the case because magnetism is force in motion and is centrifugal divergence. There is a reason why the brightest line we see right here is at the centrifugal edge of the magnet. This would be like a, the head of your shower, if you will, and of course this would be the drain. And this was the type of visual imagery I was trying to point out to people the other day. We actually have to visualize the superimposition of both occupying one wholeness, and that would be the drain and the shower head, if you will. We have two springs and two sinks. There's really only one sink, but there is no polarity. There is polarity regarding magnetism, but the polarity, of course, is a three-dimensional S-curve. But that polarity is not a duality, it's the extrapolation of a force vector, which is magnetism, which, of course, accounts for the volume and mass and magnitude of everything in the universe. 
and it has its counterpart, which of course fights back. It is the origin from which magnetism must spring, because as Faraday said accurately, magnetism is the dielectric field, just as ice would be, of course, we'd be inappropriate to say that. We say ice is the field of water. Ice would be the field of water in a kind of a crude analogy of water uh, under low temperature. And of course, ice is water. But we say ice, and we've ascribed the word ice because it is a different nature. It is a hardness. It does, and it's not liquid. It's cold. Well, human beings have done the same thing, however, unknowingly, about magnetism and dielectricity. But a magnet is not mostly magnetic. A magnet is mostly dielectric. There's a reason why there's this black hole right here at the center of this magnet, and that is, of course, the dielectric. This is the conjugate geometry of the universe. Constructive and destructive interference are the lines we actually see out here. This bright line is at the centrifugal edge of the magnet. And there's a reason why if I actually get down low, it looks like a bowl-shaped depression. This is where the dielectric portal is. And of course, the center of that, there is no magnetism. This is counter space. I prop the magnet up like this. I look down on it like this. You see that dark line at the edge of the magnet? That is counter space. This dark line, I can't have a hard time holding it there because it wants to rotate. The reason why I can't hold it there is because the, the magnet wants to rotate to the Earth's magnetic field. But there's a reason why this dark line is absolutely the same as these two portals over here. And they also, too, are relative 90 degree positions to one another. This, of course, is the right-hand rule, but the right-hand rule is no different than saying Mother Nature's uh, fetal expression modality is the lowest pressure mediation for something to exist. This darkness here is exactly the same thing as here. It points towards, this points towards the center of the magnet, this points towards the center of the magnet, and this is at the edge center of the magnet. This is the portal of counter space. Those lines, of course, are increasing uh, constructive interference, and of course the lack of lines is destructive interference. Now, we can hollow this magnet out, yes, and we can express the exact same thing. And I, of course, I have that right over here, a simple ring magnet. There is nothing in the center of this magnet. When we talk about counter space, why would we see a field where nothing is? We, of course, know about a magnetic field around a magnet. We can certainly express that, and everybody's seen it, either the ferrocell or any other magnetic viewing device or even uh, magnetic viewing film. But what about a ring magnet? There's nothing here at the center. We'd expect to see stuff at the edge, but of course we see the exact same thing at the center of a ring magnet. And also, too, let me show you something here. But of course, you know the black portal that we actually saw, the increasing inertia and acceleration towards uh, counter space on a regular flat magnet? Yes, we just got done looking at that for five minutes. We have a hole right here where no magnet is, but of course the field is, but the pressure mediation, according to Natura Naturans or Mother Nature, must remain consistent. And if you look really closely, you'll see this black little hole right there. Yes? Yeah, here's the lowest null pressure point of counter space on this ring magnet right here. I put this ring magnet up on its edge. We'll see the exact same constructive and destructive interference as we see on any other magnet, and also, too, the plane of inertia at the edge of the magnet. Let's actually put it underneath the uh, supercell here. There we go. Wait for it to develop, the image to slowly develop. This supercell needs to be rebuilt, but that's okay. I didn't want a fast appearing image anyway. Makes it harder to show things sometimes. You see the exact same little null point of counter space right here. We of course see it where the physical magnet is of counter space, directed towards the plane of inertia, where there is of course the absence of light, and of course where the absence of light is is where the dielectric is. We also see it right here in the center where there is no magnet at all, and we see it right there. We see the same thing here as we see right here. And the answer to that is not a difficult one. I don't want to answer it for you, but can you think why we see the absence of light here as we do right here? Yes? Why would that be? Let's get an edge on view. The answer is extremely simple. Because Mother Nature is extremely simple. 
It's the conjugate geometry of absolutely everything in the universe. Force of motion, inertia, and acceleration. Everything is capacitance, resistance, magnetic permeability, and dielectric permittivity. Yes. Here, of course, we see the lines of constructive and destructive interference around the periphery of the ring magnet. Yes. And right here in the center, yeah, we have this sphere. Let me if I get down at a steep angle, you can actually see the sphere in the center of the magnet where the light is painted, if you will. I use the word painted loosely. But of course, we all see the little portal right here where there's nothing here. This magnet is, is hollow, right? There's nothing there, but the field is there. And the field must express itself in the lowest pressure mediation possible. And that lowest pressure mediation possible, of course, is a sphere. We actually see a sphere of light. You may or may not be able to see it here, but you can actually... It's uh, blatantly obvious. It's a lot easier to see this if you have one in your hand. Of course, you could build these. I've got lots of videos on how to build them. You see, in every school and college should actually have one of these and uh, direct people to think about Mother Nature because we're looking at the conjugate geometry of the entire universe. Force and motion and inertia and acceleration and the constructive and destructive interference of the light as is painted by or rendered by, would be a more accurate word, the magnetic field and the dielectric. Everywhere we see the absence of light, we have uh, destructive interference. Everywhere we see light, we have constructive interference in the manifestation of the magnetic. It's a simplex constructive and destructive interference between the magnetic and the dielectric, respectively the torus and the hyperboloid. Yes, and around this, of course, we only have so much holographic dimensionality. We have an hourglass above this ring magnet. We have an hourglass, the other half of the hourglass below it. And right here at the dead center would be the, the narrowest constrictor point, like on an hourglass, you know, that thin little point right at the dead center. That's exactly what we're seeing here. That's the portal of counter space, i.e. anti-Cartesian or non-Cartesian. Inertia, the original definition of inertia, not its current connotation of inertia. We say the ether itself, the portal of ether. This is why there is no center to gravity, and this is why there is no magnetism at the center of a magnet. Gravity has no center at the center of a center of gravity, and gravity does not and must not, nor can it exist. So, If people understand the conjugate geometry of the universe vis-a-vis -vis the magnetic and the dielectric, you really do understand everything because everything else must necessitatively follow and everything does follow. Everything is simply explainable. Everything from black holes to masses to uh, galaxies to atoms and atomic geometry, everything is expressible from macro to micro, understanding conjugate geometry of the universe. Nothing escapes it. Everything is encapsulated by it. This is the legend the key and the primer of the entire universe, period. No exceptions. Absolutely no exceptions. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope it causes you to think. Yes? Because that's what's important. Thanks for watching. Lux Everetas.